Welcome to Essentials to Heal Yourself. I'm Laura Lee Humphreys. So today's conversation, we're going to conclude the series that we've been exploring for the last few episodes, which are all about seven unconscious beliefs that prevent you from healing. So today I'm going to cover the last two. And as some of the others are, then these two that we're going to talk about today are very closely related and intertwined. So as you've seen from some of the other episodes in this series, I'm talking about some very direct, core, basic, fundamental things that we need to have conversations about and understand about how our nature is, how we operate, how we are made up. Because without that fundamental understanding and without having willing to have some honest, sincere, straightforward conversations, then what's left is to muck around, going in circles, wondering why you can't heal, doing what you've always done, which doesn't work, and not being and not wondering and then in wondering how come things aren't working and not being willing to step out of the box and learn something new. So today's conversation, these last two unconscious beliefs, is really stepping out of the box to really share with you a much expanded view of who you are and how you are actually made up. So let's start with the first one. So today, so this next belief is number six in the series of seven. And the sixth belief is all about how we've been taught to believe that the entirety of who we are as a person, as a being, is nothing but your physical body. That there's nothing else in existence that could possibly exist except the physical matter and the things that you can see, touch, feel, smell, things with our five physical senses. And I can tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. And that applies to you and your makeup and who you are. We've been so indoctrinated for the last 500 years from um, science, religion, education, government, media, entertainment, healthcare, every structure, every institution of society for the last five, 600 years has been pounding the thing down our throat to tell us that we are nothing more than physical matter. That is such a blatant lie, I can't even tell you. That's not true. Even all of the sciences, so much of the technology and everything that's rolled out in the last 100 years or so, especially in the last 30 years or so, operate on the fact that energy systems exist, that there's far more to reality than our five physical senses. All you have to do is look at a spectrum of light. You see the, the microwave, the infrared, the far infrared, the ultraviolet, violet, the radio, the TV, radio, all of these, this, this vast spectrum of frequencies and light, and there's only a teeny, teeny, tiny slice within that band of light that is vis phys uh, visible to our physical senses, to our, to our eyes, which tells you how much of a lie this is to persist in believing that there's nothing that exists beyond the five sense physical senses. It's so not true. And so we can see that out here in a lot of the technologies and things, especially as more and more technologies are rolled out. When we look at, for example, wireless cell phones, wireless internet, um, biofeedback machines, um, rife uh, energetic or energy healing devices, all of the different things that are built upon a greater understanding of physics and energy and frequency and vibration. Look at Nikola Tesla, all the things that he did. Look up Royal, Ra uh, Royal Raymond Reif and all of the things that he did. They, all of Those are only two examples of many, many, many that developed technologies for healing and good that were done according to an understanding of physics that's beyond the Newtonian physics model that we've had for 500 years, which, which states that nothing could possibly exist beyond the five physical senses, beyond physical matter. That's just a straight out lie. So let's get into this further. In order to heal anything, you've got to wrap your brain around the fact that you are more 
than your physical body. That there's far more of you in the non-tangible, non-visible realms of existence of the light spectrum, if you want to call it, than just your physical form. You have your emotional self, you, all of your emotional makeup. You have your thoughts, your inner sense of being, of, of what's right and what's wrong, your sense of morality. When you have intuitive hits coming at you of, oh, I'm not sure, quite sure about this person, or yeah, this location doesn't feel quite right. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's not very good. Or if this food, uh, I don't think so. All of those things come from the intangible aspects of you, which is from your consciousness, your energy system, your electromagnetic field, all of this system that exists, like it's been measured up to six feet around you. That's what's called your aura, but only, but the truth of the matter is your electromagnetic energies extend far beyond six feet. That's just what people have been able to measure. You are that. The part of you that is your physical body is a very small portion of the, your being, of who you actually are. And unless or until you can wrap your brain around that, you will have a very difficult time healing your body beyond a certain point. Because your electromagnetic system, your energy system, has a great deal of influence upon the state of health of your body. The contents of your electromagnetic system, the type and quality of energies that you carry around you, around with you, that is you. Those in large measure determine how your body functions. The energy, the quality, the nature of energy, the nature of your thoughts, the nature of your emotional makeup, the core essence of your being, of who you are as a soul, as a being, all of that information is contained within your energy system. Your DNA reads those energy frequencies and signals. That's part of the vast amount of information that your DNA uses to build the cells of your body. If you think predominantly negative, pessimistic, life-defeating, self-defeating thoughts, that greatly influences the way the cells or the way your DNA reads the information and the genetics, which then determines which proteins are made, which then determines the nature of this, the constitution or the degree of health of the cell that is then produced. There's a huge amount of science about that in the field of epigenetics. Go look it up. The idea that you cannot change what, quote, your genetics say is such a freaking lie, I can't even tell you. There is no science to back it up. And yet, that's one of those social conditioning things that has been pushed out through the conventional medical system, the pharmaceutical system, through the media, through the education, through the universities for so many decades that now people just accept it as fact. There is no basis in reality for that idea. Go look it up. The truth of the matter is that you are an energetic being. You have an energy system that greatly influences how your genetics are expressed, what genes are expressed or not. Without this more expanded perception of yourself to accept the fact that you are an energetic being, that you have a complex energy system intertwined within your, your physical body, you will always be limited. And it will be very difficult for you to comprehend how energy medicine systems and technologies and devices work because you refuse to expand your mind beyond seeing yourself as just this physical form. So many different devices and machines and techniques coming out today, which is the direction that healthcare is going to go in the next several decades and years. Just watch for it. Things based upon scalar technology, like the EES system, um, the Rife machine, um, the BCX machine, which is based on upon, um, tes uh, Rife technology. Things built upon the techno uh, Tesla technology and biofeedback and biometrics and all the different things. Those are based upon an understanding of energy and frequency, which in order for those to even develop and have an effect on you, that it requires or 
it's part of included in that philosophy or that those physics is the understanding of your own energy system of the makeup of how you actually are and if you cannot wrap your mind around that then you'll have a very difficult time being willing to even use those technologies let alone benefit from them so i encourage you to stretch your mind let go of the idea that you are nothing more than physical matter let go of the idea that just because your grandmother or your grandfather had this and this disease, that you are destined to get it. That's nonsense. If you understand physics, if you understand the makeup of how you who you are, if you understand the natural principles of health, of how the body actually functions, you will see quite blatant how that, that is such a blatant lie. The fact that your grandmother or grandfather or father had such a disease, had, had such and such a health condition. It's because of how they ate. It's because of the nature of food they put into their mouth. It's because of how they lived. It's because of their motion, mental and emotional mindset, how they thought, whether they were primarily pessimistic or optimistic. Whether or not they had a, emotional things and trauma and things that hit them that they could not get beyond. All of those different factors of lifestyle, diet, and mindset factors went in to determine whether or not your father, grandmother, parent, who, whoever got such and such a disease. Do you have to follow along the exact same path? Is someone twisting your arm telling you you have no choice but to do the exact same things, to eat the exact same way, to live in the exact same type of lifestyle and of sedentary things, of bringing toxic load into your body? Do you have a choice in this matter? Yes or no? It's quite obvious that you do. To state that you are helpless, that you are destined to create such and such a disease, it's such nonsense. I can't even tell you. And I'm sure you can see by how I'm charged up about this because it is so untrue. You have choice. You do not have to eat the same way as your parents and grandparents. You can eat something different. You can eat food that's nutritious, that will generate life. You can exercise your body. You can move to a different town or different locale. You don't have to do the exact same thing and put yourself on the path for the exact same destiny. Such nonsense. Remove that thought from your head. Do some research, educate yourself. Go look up into the whole scientific field of epigenetics and you will see that you have power to do something different. The core root of that belief that genetics dictate your destiny is rooted in the belief that you have no power, which is exactly what the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex wants you to believe, so that you will continue giving your power, your money, your authority, your time, your energy over to them to buy their protocols and drugs and surgeries and all the things that do you harm. Stop buying into the nonsense and educate yourself and pull yourself out of that mind control because that's all it is. Learn the truth of who you are. Learn to see yourself beyond just physical matter that you can see and sense with your five physical senses. When you solely focus on just physical things and approaches and protocols like drugs and supplements and even nutrition and, and, and exercise, while they are necessary, they are only one piece of the puzzle, one part, one side of the coin. If you only focus there on what you can do physically, what you can see and feel and sense and smell and hear physically, Yes, you will have an impact on the health of your body. Yes, your body will respond. And yes, you will hit a plateau. You will only be able to take your healing so far, or if you have some condition, it can, it can go away for a while, and later on something else can, can 
present itself or the same condition can repeat itself and show up again. Why is that? Because you haven't acknowledged the other side of the coin, which is all of the intangibles of who you are and what makes you up. You have not recognized and embraced the fact that you are an energetic, spiritual, creative being, that you have an energy system comprised of all of your mental and emotional and spiritual energies, and that unless or until you deal with those things and deal with your mindset that's limiting and keeping you small and scared and in pain, and, and unless or until you deal with your emotional healing work to resolve all of the past traumas and make sense of them and forgive and let them go, you will not be able to heal beyond a certain point. That is basic physics. That is basic natural law. That's how the body operates. That's how you operate. We have been taught something so upside down and so backwards and so out of sorts, so far away from the truth of the matter of reality, it's not even funny. You cannot think that you can do something to your liver and that it won't affect the rest of your body. You can't think that you can do something to your heart and it's not going to register in every other cell all over in the rest of your body. Your body is one whole unified organism that constantly talks to itse itself all the time. All of your cells are in constant communication with each other. Your body has intelligence. It knows what's going on with one area to the next, with one organ to the next. You cannot view your body as separate pieces and parts, even though in the medical world, that's what they like to do. They like to divide and divide and divide and divide and focus in on one more thing, more and more and more, tiny, 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 tiny into the minutia at the expense of the bigger picture. And as a result, they've gotten lost. The perspective has gotten lost. And so you, you're told to go to one specialist to do whatever, whatever with your hormones. You're told to go to another specialist to do whatever, whatever with your joints and your skeletal structure. You're told to go to another specialist that has to do with your gut health. None of them talk to each other. And so they all give you various drugs, all give you various protocols and diagnoses without taking into consideration that you are a whole unified organism that what is done to one is done to the whole that what's done to the organ within your gi tract it affects your entire body that's what, one of the reasons why drugs don't work because there's all of these effects that are not taken into account and then you layer them with other drugs and other drugs and other drugs now you have this plethora of effects that are causing chaos and havoc in your body and then you wonder why you're sick You've got to expand your view of who you are and how you are made up to embrace the fact that first and foremost, you're an energetic being. True healing also requires that you take this perspective one step further, one extension out from just you as an individual, but to see how you are interacting with the whole, with other people, with your community, with your family, with your partner, with the earth, the environment, nature, animals, plants, um, birds, everything. You are not separate from the whole. We live in a symbiotic relationship with all of nature, with all of earth, with all of each other. What is done to one is done to another. It's time to begin to recognize this. It's, begin, it's time to begin to recognize that if you poison the earth, you're going to suffer. Duh. That's a pretty basic thing. And yet how many people, how often are we so disconnected to this obvious fundamental truth? If corporations and people and groups and political interests and all these other groups of people out here fund projects that poison the water, that put toxic things into the dirt, that, build, that grow toxic, unhealthy food, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the end result of all of this poisoning will make you sick. 
We live in a whole environment. You're not separated from everything else. If you live in a city that's filled with radiation and chemtrails and poisoning of the food and of the water and of the dirt, what do you think your body is going to do? Expand your idea of who you are and expand your idea of the connect interconnectedness you have with all of life. This is not rocket scientist. A three-year-old can figure this out. Begin to take this expanded view into you and how it applies to how you care for your body and how you do your lifestyle. So with that, let me give you a couple of exercises or action takers that you can do to start to look more at this idea, the sixth belief that we are more than just a physical body. Are you familiar with the energy system? Have you heard of meridians, acupuncture points, the chakras? If not, go look them up. Those are expressions or that that's a body of work is an age old system from India and China, from those old ancient cultures that are over 5,000 years old. They knew very well that you are an energetic being. They knew very well that you have an energy system that impacts the health of your body, uh, the physical health of you. Go learn from them and understand what that energy system is and how it interplays, how it interfaces with your body and how it affects your physical health. Go look into Karelian photography. What is it? It's been around for decades. It's a type of camera that can take a picture and show you parts of your aura, your energy system, the different colors, your different lights. Stretch open your mind. So that brings us to our seventh and final unconscious belief in this series and that is all about what we have been taught regarding our body we've been afraid to trust our body and not to understand its divine nature of how it works and the fact that it works according to natural law it's very tied in with the previous uh belief that we believe to ourselves to be nothing more than a physical body, uh, more than physical matter. This one takes it a step further and it's going into our body itself, how it's built. Our society is all of <laughs> everything in this series I've talked about is so many of the social conditioning that's been pushed at us that we've adopted over our lifetimes. And even from our family of origin growing up, growing up from the education system, the religious system, the medical system, everything about who we are and how we are to run our lives. One of the things that we've also been taught <clears throat> is that disease is a mystery. We don't know how things developed. Well, within the medical model, the allopathic conventional medical model, no, most of the time they don't because they've been, never been taught. And oftentimes they don't want to know. Because if they did, then they would have to be more honest and upright with you to give you natural principles of health of how to heal yourself rather than to sell you drugs that poison in you and do you harm. The body is an intelligent design. It knows how to heal itself. It knows how to protect itself. There are hardwired mechanisms in it that if you just get out of your own way, and give your body the resources it needs. It can regulate itself, it can cleanse itself, it can heal itself, it can maintain itself. It's a divine design, simple yet beautiful and complex at the same time, that operates according to natural law. What is natural law? I'll give you an example. If you drop something, you know it's gonna to fall to the floor, that's gravity. That's a natural law. It's the same every time. You can drop something a hundred million thousand times and it's always going to drop to the floor. Gravity will never change. It, it's something that you can count on. It, it's consistent. It always responds and acts the same exact way. Same type of principles with the usage of electricity and how it flows. 
There's some, there's basic things that's understood that never deviate, never change. Spring always follows winter. Summer always goes into fall. There's the cycle of the seasons, the length of days, the shortness of nights. That's according to natural rhythms and natural law. It's consistent. It's something you can rely on and depend upon and count on. It never changes. The way your body functions and is designed to function is according to exactly the same principles of health, of how it's designed to run. All you need to do is understand those natural principles, understand the intelligent design of your body. It doesn't take much. It's just learning natural health, natural healing principles, and get out of your way, put your ego aside, and follow natural law. Learn to live in harmony with natural law and let your body do what it knows how to do to heal itself, to cleanse itself, to balance itself. Give it the rest it needs. Give it the exercise and movement it needs. Give it the grounding and the connection with the earth that it needs. Give it the nutrition that it needs. Give it the sunshine that it needs. Basic, simple things. <clears throat> As you learn to do that, learn to live in harmony with natural laws of health, then something awakens within you that has been shut down or maybe was never developed within you at all because of the social conditioning that we've been subjected to, to tell us that we have to doubt our intuition, that we have to view ourselves incorrectly, that we have to give our power away to somebody outside of ourselves and view them as an authority over our body and our health. As you brush all of that aside, and start to do the basic things and giving your body the basic resources for it to heal itself, you learn to trust yourself. You reawaken or awaken for the first time your intuitive voice. You start to get in touch with the inner wisdom of your body and of your spirit or soul. You begin to desire a cult to cultivate a relationship with your spiritual connection. You begin to rethink about how you've been doing your life, wanting to simplify it, wanting to put more meaning and purpose into it. Choices like this inevitably lead to the same conclusion, the same result, which is greater happiness, health, calm, peace, energy, longevity, enjoyment, satisfaction, peace of mind. Isn't it worth it? Those are some of the fruits of health. They don't just come from a magic pill. They don't just happenly, ha magically happen. They don't just happen just because you got a job. You can't get married to receive them. You can't get a big enough paycheck to receive them. You can't have the enough social status to receive them. You can't have all of the shiny bright objects. None of that stuff is going to give you the peace of mind, the confidence, the inner state of knowing who you are, the trust in yourself, the trust in your intuition, a recognition of your truth, truths that when you hold to them, you cannot be bought and manipulated and influenced by other people who want to just take your energy. You become a powerful being, a creative being, knowing who you are. And your body reflects that. The state of your health reflects that. That is living in harmony with cosmic law with natural laws of principles of health. So to sum up this seventh uh, unconscious belief, then here's a couple of action takers that you can do. So think of a time when you wanted your body to do something, to achieve a goal, um, let's say working out or doing a race, something physical. How did you prepare for it? 
What kind of words and thoughts did you say to yourself and to your body about it? Were they very positive and uplifting and building confidence and assurance in yourself that you could do the thing? Or were they full of pessimism, criticism, beating yourself up, getting hard on yourself for not being perfect the first time? In the process of achieving that goal, of doing that activity, was there a point when you had to surrender to the knowingness and the wisdom of your body, of how your body does something? So for example, running a race, did you have to just surrender to the fact that you've trained your body well, that it knows how to speed up, to maintain pace, to do all the things in order to be successful at winning that race? You've trained your body through visualizations, meditations, exercising, nutrition, coaching, training, all of that stuff. And then in the moment, you have to just surrender to the process and trust your instincts, trust your body, trust your intuition that you can do whatever you set out to do. It's the same thing with giving birth, with childbirth. There is a point when the mother has to just simply surrender to the process and allow the body to do what it's designed to do, to allow the body to do what it knows how to do, which is to give birth to a child. Everybody knows, every mother knows that point when she just had to surrender. So think about that in your life and experiences you had like that, where you just had to get your ego out of the way, get out of your head, and just allow your body to do the thing that it knew, knows how to do. Start to recognize and identify that your body has the intelligence. It knows how to heal itself. It knows how to regulate itself. And then secondly, here's another act action taker exercise that I encourage you to do is if what I've talked about here in terms of natural law, living in harmony with it, if that's a new idea for you, especially when it comes to how your body functions, how your body heals itself, how to live in harmony with natural law so that you can experience greater health. If this is a whole new world or concept for you, then I encourage you to go do some study on it, look into it, research it, find books. How did people heal naturally? What kind of print natural healing principles have been used forever in every culture around the globe, except ours for the last 100 years, because they've decided to throw it out. But look into the wisdom of other cultures of how people have cared for themselves and healed for themselves for centuries. Be willing to learn and educate yourself and you will find a completely other world, a completely different mindset and paradigm than the Western model of drug care that's been so inverted and so upside down. It's no wonder that so many people are miserable and fat and sick and unhealthy and diseased today because that is precisely what this current medical model wants to produce. So if you want to change that, if you no longer want to live within that, take the steps to empower yourself to get out of that system and find things that work for you. Be willing to look at your mindset. Review this series of episodes of all of these seven unconscious beliefs. These are just seven of them. I mean, there's more that you'll find as you dig into them. Other, um, other beliefs that are like secondary roots that that go off from these seven explore yourself and what you've been taught to believe and how you feel about things open your mind to grow and by doing that your body will respond you'll find new things to give to yourself so that you can heal yourself
which is the whole point of everything that I share with you on this podcast. So if you'd like to dig a little bit more into these seven unconscious beliefs, and I encourage you to download the free PDF gift that I have for you, which is a guide that walks you through all seven of these. You can find the link to download them in the description below this episode. So grab that, read through it, share it with your friends and family, share this episode with friends and family, have conversations about these topics that I've brought up here in this series and in this episode. Question them, Have con- think about things. Leave comments about your thoughts about what you've learned from what I've shared with you today in this episode. Share this episode, subscribe to my channel, like all the episodes, and help me grow and spread this podcast to those who need it. So thank you again, as always, so much for tuning in, for listening to me, sometimes on my passionate rants. (laughs) But thank you so much for being here and sharing your time with me listening and taking in what I have to share with you. And until next time, take care and I'll see you then.